Yeah, so welcome. Uh, today we're going to talk about the web and uh, specifically TypeScript. So I put the title, what is that and why should I care? So I, I thought, uh, I mean, we did Cesar's course uh, in, the, in the bachelor and then, then I started in Code Lounge. Then I was asked to do web, but over those few years, a lot of things changed. Um, so, uh, and one of the things that changed is uh, we had uh, TypeScript. Uh, so I, I think it's important to know a little bit the background, how come, why do we need that? So I wanted to start with, uh, uh, yeah, wanted to start to speak a little bit about, very shortly, about some technologies, how they are used today on the web. Uh, then some concepts like single page application. What does it mean? Uh, what is that? Uh, the jam stack. Wh what is that? And then finally to TypeScript. And then uh, the main part should be about uh, coding in TypeScript and using React. So we will call the Pong game. Let's see how this works out. And then after that uh, we have a little bit of discussion. Um, so, yeah, so basically, uh, HTTP HTML came 1990, and then it was hyperlinks and static pages. So one of the things that we still have today are hyperlinks, which is really, maybe it seems very simple, but it's something that really, uh, really have defined the web and how it works. And they are still very much used today, of course. Then a few years later, there was uh, some need to make pages uh, a bit that you can do some calculations on pages. So this uh, Brendan H was uh, asked to provide or to create a scripting language for uh, for the for the browser uh, Netscape that was the big browser at, at that time. Uh, he did that in ten days. Uh, so yeah, that's very short time to create a whole language. Uh, at the same time, uh, during the same year, uh, PHP was created, which was about the server side to create uh, also kind of the ma dynamic pages, but from the server side. <coughs> then in 2003, uh, this concept about single page applications was coined. Uh, and there was the goal really that you can uh, load your whole application just in one single page. You just get one HTML file, and with that you were able also to do interact and so on. Um, this is different from before, where you always had to use the links in order to get new new information. Uh, also at that time there was a WordPress, which is a content management system, was released, uh, which is still huge today on the web. Um, and then in 2005 something happened, so uh, there was a paper released on uh, AJAX, which is a synchronous web, to make asynchronous web applications. Uh, this was a technique used by Google, I think in their Gmail application, so that you can load the content before, without actually having to get a new page. So you could just ask the server for some more information and display it directly. So there was an, also another major make, breakthrough that is still used today. Um, yeah, and then we go down. 2009, we had Node.js, moving basically JavaScript onto uh, backend side, to server side. Uh, yeah, this was uh, basically taking uh, Google's V8 JavaScript engine and putting it, uh, yeah, making um, an interpreter for that where you can, could make a server. And with that, also this, this famous Node package manager, also used today, so this enabled people to write some JavaScript libraries and just push it to this NPM, uh, basically website, and just pull in. So we will see how, how this works also today. So you can see the pay, there's more libraries, the websites are getting bigger, um, and then, so now when the pages are getting bigger, you also need a better way to manage that uh, complexity. So uh, I think it was Google who uh, proposed web components 
uh, there's a way to make your own custom components where you can encapsulate some functionality and then reuse that very easily. So you maybe you know in HTML we have these different tags. There is the defi uh, finite set of tags, but basically with these web components you're able to define your own tags as you want, so you can reuse them. And this has been going on, it has now, actually this year, all, I would say, all major browsers have implemented it. There have been discussions of which features are not, but basically it's a standard now available. So with vanilla JavaScript, you can write web components and they run, run in your browser. Uh, then Microsoft also came in 2012, because um, they noticed when now the application are getting bigger, with a dynamic language like JavaScript, there was something lacking. So uh, it was very hard for them to, yeah, to manage the code base because uh, you didn't know which parameters you have in, in functions you, uh, and, uh, and other. So basically type information was missing. So they started to work on that. Uh, and then also in 2013, React, it's a web comp basically taking a similar idea like web components, but from a separate library, making that uh, as a yeah, UI library, and they were open sourcing that. So, and they were able to do that, let's say, faster than web components became a standard. So in that way, that has been adopted way quicker than web components. Uh, and then finally, in 2015, this uh, idea of uh, uh, Jamstack was coined. So basically, uh, you write your application not like a content management system where you have like a database that stores all your information and the pages are uh, generated from that, but uh, you can do all of these things on the client side in the browser. So you have your JavaScript, JavaScript to drive that. You have then uh, different APIs uh, that are available to pull in data, and you can make templates using different uh, markup languages. Yeah, I think that was it. Um, yeah. So what about this single-page application? So that's basically the way most uh, uh, yeah web apps are built today. So you have Ajax to pull in your content that you need. So you know, the user clicks a button, something happens, and then you fetch the new data. And this really created this uh, experience on the web to have a native, like you can create a native uh, application that wasn't uh, possible before. But with that, there are some challenges. So for instance, if you have a single page, it's more hard to navigate in the application, so in the beginning the idea was you have hyperlinks and in this way you can navigate the page, the browser knows the steps you have taken, you can easily send a link and so on. Um, but with the single page application you need another way to do that. So we, they call this client side routing, so there are certain libraries available for that. So you have to do, to do it, manage that in a different way. Also, if you have a single page, you have to load the whole page at once, which of course you need then uh, to load much more data than before. Uh, so they, uh, actually over the last year, has this term called lazy loading has been, um, yeah, been used. Basically, as the user is uh, viewing data, it is uh, fetching the data. So let's say you have an image, but it's not yet displayed. Once it is displayed, then only it's fetched. And then with caching, you can still get a fast user experience. And then how do you engineer when the, these client-side apps get bigger? Uh, you, you, then they have components, uh, but you also, when you have components, you need a way to manage state. So now there's some uh, global state management uh, libraries like Redux that are being used. Uh, yeah, so this Jamstack, um, like we talked about, so basically is uh, the JavaScript part is to load dynamic content uh, dynamically. Uh, APIs, so you can re reuse then the APIs and it's all over HTTPS, so it's uh, secure. Uh, you can either have REST endpoints or GraphQL, mm -hmm. that's also becoming more popular. Um, 
and then with markup. So basically how it works is that during build time, so you have um, in your uh, CI uh, pipeline, you have a build that takes all, uh, all this uh, markup and all these things and puts it together and creates a static page out of that. And from this uh, static page, uh, it's way easier you can deploy it on any server uh, and like you have Apache or you have uh, yeah, <coughs> other similar static web servers that are available. But not only that, you have also, uh, you can put it on a, like a bucketing system like Amazon S3, which is really, really cheap. Basically, you just put it there and they have a way you can set up your URL and that is all done. And this all can be done in your DevOps pipeline. So in this way, uh, the performance is faster compared to this uh, content management systems that have been popular uh, some years ago, still are popular. Uh, it's more secure, HTTPS, you have, uh, yeah, it's very cheap to do, and for the DevOps, I mean, for the developers, a great experience, you can use the, the regular tools like uh, Git and all these, uh, all these things. And also with scalability, you know, if you have a static page, you can just put it on any CDN and uh, just spread it all over the world and it loads very fast. Uh, yeah, so then uh, having these big apps, um, we went into TypeScript. So basically, what is then TypeScript? So you take JavaScript, you add type definitions, that's TypeScript, yeah. So the concept is uh, very simpler, it's very simple, um, and it creates a great uh, rich developer experience as we will see in the, in the IDE uh, by still being in the JavaScript environment. So all these modules that are being worked on since uh, 2010 when NPM was released, you can still use, no problem. How does it then work? So you have, uh, you take the TypeScript code, they have a TypeScript compiler, that converts that compiles that into JavaScript. Uh, but in JavaScript, maybe you know there are many different versions of JavaScript, and the browsers have a tendency to be lagging behind. So maybe there is now a, a, a latest version of JavaScript, but the browser maybe can only run the version five years ago, right? Uh, so in order to let the developer use the latest features, they have this transpilation. Uh, stage that uh, transpiles that newer JavaScript into a older version, let's say. So, uh, yeah. And then you have type, type safety in the compilation stage. Yeah, uh, and so on. Okay, um, so uh, let's uh, build Pong. Let's see how this goes. So, I found this uh, tutorial. It's uh, some years old in the JavaScript. And the idea was to take this and make it into a re React web app using these technologies. See if we can manage that. Um, so uh, to start, uh, uh, we start on the terminal. There's one command. You need uh, the node package manager installed on, on your computer. And then you run it, and then you have uh, there is a library for creating a, a React app that pulls a lot of stuff into basic set up your whole development environment. We give it a name. Uh, okay. And then we say we want to use TypeScript. Okay. Um, based on that, uh, it will f uh, download uh, that uh, repository, it will uh, set it up and download all the packages needed, it will <coughs> create the folder, and so on. Uh, yeah. So now that was done, and you can see here there are these, uh, to start, you can create, start a development server, Build it builds um, this static website that you can pu push in production. Test you can run your tests. Uh, yeah, then it's this thing eject so you can uh, go out of this React uh, ecosystem or the 
because we have created that. Uh, and now we will load this in uh, VS Code. So, uh, so let's do it so you can see that. Yeah, so this is basically what it creates. Uh, there's this huge, uh, there's this node modules folder. Um, let's see if I can have it here. So if we do, uh, here we can see, so it downloads basically 300 megabytes of stuff uh, just to get started. Yeah. So that seems like a lot. Um, but with some magic, it's able to produce a much smaller static website in, in the end. Uh, then for TypeScript, we have the TypeScript configuration. Basically, here you can provide compiler options. You, you have the basic version. You start TypeScript is basically you write JavaScript, and it doesn't complain. And then you can gradually add more and more uh, restrictions. Uh, you can say it has, yeah. Uh, yeah, here's one example with strict. So this does more strict type checking. Check uh, and the, all the code is stored here. Now let's <coughs> do this. Uh, we do it yarn and start. Now this will start the de development server. So it's very fine to load, so it's compiling, and so um, basically that's uh, the app where we are now. So now we want to try to create, make a poem out of this. Um, so we have here the, here's the index page. It's very simple. It just tells render this component. And the component right now is, is here. So this is a TypeScript file with some uh, markup. So you're able to take uh, TypeScript and add uh, the kind of HTML markup into that. Uh, and then for the, the types that we spoke about before, okay, we will see later. Or no, we have one. Yeah, we'll see later how we add the types. Uh, okay, so let's start. We create the components folder. Then we will move uh, these guys here. We move, and now uh, yes. So if we can see here, uh, with the using TypeScript is able also to infer that we move now the this ID is in, able to infer we move the file now it's in the components folder, and then uh, there's something else. Yeah, we have to do this the logo. <coughs> See, it says here compiling. Uh -huh. uh, anyway, it doesn't matter right now. Uh, uh, two, two dots. No? Two dots, yeah, thanks. It's a little bit small on this screen. Okay, now we're done and now it's moved. So, another thing that uh, in this Create React app, you have this, uh, it's called hot module reloading. So. Whenever you move a module or you change a module, it will automatically inject those changes in the website. So before, you know, if you develop a website, you like, uh, you do some change, and then you're like, oh, I have to reload to render all again, and so on. But now, uh, today, you just change, and then the browser is automatically updated. Yeah. Uh, Yes, okay, so now let's uh, change this file here. I have to have my cheat. Uh, 
changed and it's up to date. Okay, then we want to do um, uh, add the score. So I create a new component. Score TSX. Uh, we have to then import React. Okay, and then uh, I will copy paste there a little bit since we don't have so much time. Um, do you want to read that right now? Um, yeah, so this will show the score. We can start with this. And then we need to add it into our app. here, <laughs> score, okay, uh -huh. okay, you see, now it's added and we should be able to see it, yeah. um, so that was it for that, then we need actually to start the game, okay, so let's create a file for that. in a while. Okay, so basically here we create a canvas uh, in React it works in different ways so we'll be able to access this canvas later you can create this kind of reference object and then we set the width and the height. Okay, I save that and then we will uh, pass it in, be in between the score Now we should be able to say something. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> it's there. Uh, okay, we will we will fix that in a moment. Uh, but it's there. It's just that it doesn't have any color. So you see, it's in, in between. There. Um, then let's add some um, uh, yes game interface. Then let's create the game. Uh, so we create a new folder. And here we create a new file. And this is a declaration file. So in this file, we will have the type, uh, some type declarations. Um, with this, um, yeah. 
with this one, we're able to define uh, here an interface. Uh, a game entity. So we, in the game we will have a ball and we will have two, uh, two players that have a paddle each. Okay. Uh, we are able to, uh, and they will all have a render, so they are able to render themselves, you know, depending on where the ball goes. Uh, and then we will also have, a, so this is done by an interface, and the interface can, uh, the classes can implement this interface, or you can just create any data uh, object basically, or any JavaScript object, and you can say this has this interface, and then it will do the add a type checking to that. Uh, and then we have the goal uh, was scored type, which we will then see later in order to, to get the goal. And then we have the different entities. So, um, Have a ball. Uh, yeah. So the ball. Now I think I will just copy paste here. Uh, that we can see. So it doesn't have a paddle. We have to create a paddle also. But uh, basically here we have a class ball that implements this uh, interface that we saw before. Uh, it has some properties, uh, x and y coordinate, coordinates, it, uh, then it has some, uh, it knows the width and the height of the canvas, and it has some speed, okay? And then here we have this render method, so uh, that does the rendering of it. <coughs> okay, and then let's add on this paddle. Another thing, so you can also define. Um, you can also define an abstract class, like in most programming languages uh, or type programming languages, and then we uh, extend that in the player and in the computer. Okay, and they all both take a paddle. Okay, so we have that. Let's then go back to the pong game. Components. Let's see if we can just do this. So slow. Okay. Skipping ahead a little, to missing some libraries. So this is a library for state management. Tools, and then we have, and then we also, uh, so, and so how it works is also type some to be able to use these all these npm libraries. The that were not typed because they were all written in JavaScript, right? So then they were thinking, how do we, how do we fix this? So they developed this, uh, there's like a website you can go 
uh, called definitely typed, and there people can put the, the type declarations of different libraries. So if you don't, if there's a library you want to use, it's missing the types, you can yourself write the types and push it there, and then other people can use it. And uh, that's stored there under app types. Okay, so now we should, I hope we can, now we can import, it's available. Then we have this piece type thing and the app. Okay. Uh, now we add a lot of stuff. Yeah, now let me just uh, do this. See, so if you would write JavaScript, it would not tell you these uh, things, right? Um, so at least make something good. We can add a player, and then you can do this thing: uh, add all missing imports. very speedy because uh, a bit longer than I thought but um, now I can explain a bit how it works so now let's see yeah so now what we have to do you see uh, a goal was scored and then we can go here so uh, the point here is that uh, in the when you have many components so classically you would then uh, you need a way in able to have the state somewhere on, on your application, right? So in React, how this works, so you have some, you have uh, different components like this. So that seems easy, then they can share the state directly. They could just send it, but after a while, uh, you, this component gets too big. So you have, it's built up maybe of these three components. Right, uh, and then you, what? You, in order to, s but maybe only this component actually needs certain data, right? So what do you do? Then you have to send here, and then this has to pass down the information. But in React, there is this thing that uh, you should never pass down information. Yes. So if there is some update, it shouldn't go down. Uh, so then in that case, you have to ask the parent. So you can do a call, basically it's like a callback thing. So to avoid this, uh, then they introduce this Redux uh, state management. So you basically, it's like a, you have your state here, and they are stored in different stores. And then each component can say, oh, I want uh, this part of the store. Or I need now, you know, like in this case now, Again, uh, something was, um, uh, you know, a point was made, so you, uh, somewhere, somewhere it is, uh, it can be passed in. I think we see it here. Uh, yeah, the, the computer scored, so it increased. But now you need, we need to be able to listen to that. So we go in the score uh, here. Um, Here we go in the 
score and here we say you see it doesn't yet listen so we add the this missing information to here or and then we port these things that are missing and I think now it should refresh Yeah, so I think uh, that's all what we made at least. It's a quick overview, very <laughs> quick overview of uh, uh, you know, benefit of TypeScript. We saw how we can use uh, types. I mean, also with the compiler, you get a lot of information that you regularly, I mean, otherwise you wouldn't get. Then you have to check, oh, is this parameter here passed in? Why is that wrong? Or you have to always look in the documentation, how does it work, but here with TypeScript, you know, uh, we can take the phone game, uh, even the canvas, so it knows the type on the canvas, so I don't actually need even to look it up, otherwise I would need to look how do you use the canvas, but uh, you don't need to do that. And here it says, oh, this, uh, with property, it's either a string or a number, or it could be undefined. So all these things help a lot. It really speeds up uh, your development. But how? Uh, yeah, the last thing I want to say about the with TypeScript. So because of the types that are separate from the, let's say from the language or on top of JavaScript, uh, they were able to when they're building. If you're using Visual Studio Code, even if you write JavaScript, you're able to get the types uh, because they they can check the code and then they know, oh, now I'm using this uh, canvas element and then they look up the type definition independently. So even if you're using JavaScript, it's actually TypeScript that helps you to, to get all this uh, additional information. Um, yes, I think, yeah. I think uh, we can open for questions.